And good evening, physicists. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at problem number uh, 41 uh, out of chapter 4 today. Um, and this is a new problem for many of us um, because it deals with inclined planes. So uh, we're going to be inclined uh, to talk about that uh, quite a bit. Um, okay, so what's the problem say? Uh, it says a 15 kilogram box is released on a 32 degree incline. Okay, first up, uh, let's get this picture drawn, right? Okay, so what do we know? We know that uh, the mass of this object is 15.0 kilograms. Uh, we know that this plane is inclined 32 degrees. And it also says here that when the box is released, the box accelerates down the plane uh, at a speed of 0 0.30 meters per second squared. And that is down the plane. Okay. And then the problem asks, what is the friction force? So this will be force of kinetic friction. And what is the coefficient uh, of kinetic friction? Okay. Lots going on here. Lots going on. Let's start out with our free body diagram. Okay, I got this box. What's happening to it? Well, the box has mass, therefore there is a weight, and I'm going to call that W. Okay. Now, uh, there is a normal force, and the normal force, uh, is, remember the word normal literally means perpendicular. So the perpendicular force that the surface exerts uh, must go off in this direction here. Now notice that the normal force is not equal to the weight um, here, all right? It's actually less. And then of course, uh, we have friction, right? And friction acts uh, parallel to the surface uh, and then in a direction opposite of motion. So we would have F sub K, or force of kinetic friction here. All right. <clears throat> so those are the three forces that are acting. And of course, we know that the motion of the box is uh, down the plane here. Well, what? Uh, where do we even start here? What in the world is going on? Uh, how do we figure uh, this stuff out? Well. Here's what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to define a coordinate system for this problem. Uh, and to help me out, I am going to define my coordinate system uh, like this. I'm going to say this is the positive x direction, and I'm going to say this is the positive y direction, right? But Mr. Kirsten, you can't do that. My math teacher told me that plus x always points to the right uh, like this, and y is always like this. How can you do this? Well, I can define my coordinate system any way I want, and that's the way I want to define it, and as long as I draw it in, I'm going to use that. And as it turns out, that's going to make my life a lot easier. So, um, you know, uh, so if your math teacher walks in the room, just, just go like this. <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, back to it here. So that's how I'm going to define my coordinate system. Well, let's just start thinking about things and see what we can figure out. Okay, I know this box, I know that the acceleration in the y direction is equal to zero. That is, this box is going to go down the ramp, but it's not going to go up into space, okay? Um, so what does that mean? Uh, that means that the net force in the y direction must be zero, okay? Right? If the acceleration in the y direction is zero, uh, that means the net force in the y direction must be zero. Well, what is the uh, what forces are acting in the y direction? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the weight, W, and I'm going to break the weight up into two components. Okay, And I'm going to call them W uh, sub y and w sub x. So I'm going to break the weight up into a component perpendicular to the surface called wy and a component parallel to the surface. Okay, so what do I know here? Well, since the net force in the y direction is zero, right, 
um, <clears throat> zero must equal normal force plus the normal force minus W uh, sub Y. In other words, uh, this is canceling this out. Well, if I could just figure out then uh, W sub Y, I would know the normal force because W sub Y in magnitude is equal to the normal force. Normal and W sub Y are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction here. Well, <clears throat> well, 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 how about we just find out what W is, all right? Let's start with that. Well, W is mg, right? And I could figure that out. That would be 15.0 uh, times 9.8. And uh, therefore, W um, would be uh, equal to 147 newtons. All right, that's a start. At least I know something in this problem. Um, and what, by the way, why do I want to find this normal force anyway? Well, uh, to find the coefficient and friction, both of these um, deal with the normal force, right? For instance, uh, F sub K is equal to mu sub K uh, times the normal force. So I might need to know the normal force. Okay, well, <clears throat> I claim that I am going to find W sub Y and therefore my normal force. And how am I going to find W sub Y? I claim that this angle right in here is theta, okay? Um, and I know what theta is, it's 32 degrees. Uh, therefore, um, I claim that the cosine of theta uh, would be equal to wy over w, um, therefore wy would be equal to w uh, cosine theta, uh, or in other words, uh, 147 uh, times the cosine of 32 degrees. Uh, in other words, WY, uh, which is also my normal force in magnitude, is equal to 124.7 uh, newtons. Okay, so that's good. I know my normal force. But Mr. Kirsten, why is this angle theta here? Why is this angle theta? Just because that angle's theta, you know, doesn't mean that angle's theta. Come on, what's going on here? Well, let's uh, let's get mathy about it here, since you're insisting. Um, all right, here is this angle theta, and W must go straight down, right? Um, and since W goes straight down, uh, this is a perpendicular. Also, uh, WY is perpendicular to the surface, right? Uh, therefore, this is 90 degrees, all right? Uh, okay, so this is 90 degrees, that's theta. I'm going to call this angle here alpha, right? And of course, alpha plus theta would have to be 90 degrees. Why is that? Well, all three of these angles would add up to 180. Uh, 180 minus 90 is 90, so alpha plus theta would be 90 degrees. But wait a minute, this is 90 degrees, that's alpha, and this in here would have to be some angle such that 90 plus that angle plus alpha would be 180. In other words, whatever this angle is, this angle plus alpha has to be 90 degrees. Well, therefore, uh, that angle would have to be theta. You could also do some proof involving similar triangles, uh, which I can't recall off the top of my head right now. But uh, that, uh, that's uh, a proof probably good enough for a physicist. Maybe a mathematician could maybe do it a little better. But uh, I'm sure there's... Anyway, okay, so... That angle in there is theta, which is the same as that angle. We're going to do that uh, quite a bit, actually. Okay, back to my problem here. Uh, what is my plan here? All right, um, I'm going to find, uh, what am I going to find? I am going to find all of these different things in here. Uh, for instance, I found wy was w cosine theta. Well... Wouldn't Wx be equal to W sine theta then? Uh, if I looked at this triangle here, right? Um, just as I found Wy, I could find Wx using a little sine theta. Um, so 
if I plug that in, I would get for WX uh, 77.9 uh, newtons. Okay, why do I want to do all this? Okay, I claim that the acceleration in the X direction is equal to the net force in the X direction divided by mass. In other words, Newton's second law works in the X direction. Uh, it works in the Y direction. It works in all directions. Okay. Um, okay. Well, what forces are acting in the X direction? Well, I have WX uh, working to push the, accelerate the object down the ramp in the plus X direction. And I have F sub K uh, working to um, oppose the motion in the x direction, so pointing in the negative x direction. All right. Well, I know just about everything in this equation except uh, f sub k, and I can solve for it. In other words, if I do a sub x times m uh, is equal to w x minus f sub k, uh, I could uh, solve for F sub K, the force of kinetic friction, which is something I wanted to do. Uh, so let's do that here. Let's put in 0 0.30, and let's put in 15.0, and let's put in WX, which is 77.9, and minus F sub K. And uh, if we uh, <clears throat> beat this into submission here, um, a little bit um, with our algebra, um, we would get 4.5 equals 77.9 minus F sub K. Uh, therefore, F sub K, the um, force of uh, kinetic friction, uh, has to be equal to 73.4 newtons. And that's, that's one of the things we were after, right? Um, and then, of course, uh, once we have that, um, we could say that uh, mu sub k uh, is equal to F sub k uh, divided by the normal force, which is also equal to uh, uh, the y component of the weight. Uh, so that would be 73.4 uh, divided by 124.7. Um, Therefore, mu sub k, oh, I'm running off the page here. Uh, mu sub k ends up being 0.59. And remember, there's no units on mu sub k. Uh, it's a force divided by a force, and newtons cancel. All right, so uh, we have solved for the force of kinetic friction. We've solved for the coefficient of kinetic friction. Um, life is good. Life is really good here. All right, uh, nice work on problem 41 in Chapter 4. And, of course, uh, as your... Um, as your... Uh, prize here for hanging in there. Yet another senior picture uh, of Mr. Kirsten, this time in a leather jacket. Look at that guy. Once again, check out that mullet hair. Um, what a what a fun thing. What a thing, fun thing. All right. Great job, physicists. Uh, we will see you tomorrow.